Hello everyone, I'm Professor Jilly Salmon. For online and blended learning to be happy and successful, your learners need to be supported through a structured development process. It's what we call a scaffold. It's a way of creating what people call pedagogy, a journey. So I'm going to talk to you today about my five stage model, which provides you with a framework for a learning scaffold and one that you can incorporate into your Carpe Diem learning design. So the five stage model is based on extensive pedagogical and student centered research over 50 years. The five stage model offers the essential support to participants as they build up expertise on learning and on working together. And it helps you to productively blend face-to-face -face and digital environments. It will also help you to decide what kind of activities to consider at each point in your storyboard planning. The model will help your students to increase their skill at working together and it will also explain what the academics and tutors can do. And it also incorporates ways of building in appropriate motivation at each step. So one way of thinking about it is as a flight of steps. So stage one of the step, individuals will need access and purposeful reasons to take part. One key to stage one is ensuring that your participants have easy access to the platform, processes and systems in place. Another is that they are motivated to spend time and effort on their learning. Not just once, not just twice, but they keep on returning throughout their unit of study. So then we move on to stage two. Stage two involves individuals establishing their personal identities with the learning group and then finding others to work and learn with. At this stage, as the designer, you are doing nothing less than creating your own little micro community through active and interactive learning and teaching. Be prepared to be amazed at how well your students can work together productively and constructively if you create the right opportunities and build the scaffold from the ground up. At stage three, you can expect that learners will engage in mutual exchange of information and make their own course-related contributions. At stage three, plan your design with a strong focus on learning outcomes, your pedagogical objectives, as well as the interaction between the group. You will find that up to and including stage three, a form of cooperation occurs whereby each student can support other people's goals while they're working together. But at stage four, you can plan for the interaction becoming much more collaborative and much more team orientated. At stage four in your design, it's possible to offer activities where group goals are there with more complex multiple activities and contributions. If you kept it simple to that point, you will find you're much happier about their ability at stage four. And you can design for your students to become contributors as well as consumers of knowledge. 
If your design has scaffolded learning, motivation, access and working together to this stage, at stage four, you can be more ambitious as a designer. For example, activities around critical thinking, judging, evaluating can be introduced. You can increase the creativity, the discovering and the inventive work. And of course, the practical thinking, using, applying and practicing. I know this is what you wanted your students to do anyway, but to understand the scaffold, lead them up the steps and you will find at stage four, they are happier and more successful. Now by stage five, you can expect that participants are comfortable in working together and can fully exploit the benefits of team working for their learning and the technology you've chosen to use. In your design, it's really worth trying to build in some suitable activities for this, the fifth stage. Students should have become able to take more responsibility for themselves and their learning group. They can also look backwards towards what they've learnt through the first four stages. It's good design at stage five of your scaffold to prepare your students for some form of metacognition. By that I mean learning about how they are learning. Even one or two activities at this stage is really worthwhile for their future. Promoting metacognition enables a form of self-awareness and is an important part of becoming an independent learner. So activities at this stage should include reflection, evaluation and critiquing of the learning experience, not just the final exam. A benefit of using the five stage model to scaffold your unit of study is that you will know how your students are likely to respond and benefit at each step and hence the impact of your storyboard and design efforts are increased. Throughout your unit there will be more active learning, wider contribution from students and through group working and ultimately you will increase your student satisfaction with their experience. The model was based on a grounded model and I can promise the increased student satisfaction if you go through all the steps. By the way, if you miss out a step, you'll typically find people slip down the stairs. So do try and include something at each of the five stages. For you, as the designer and the teacher, if you use the five stage model as a scaffold, you should spend less time on recalcitrant students and have more time to provide great activities and give in that all essential frequent feedback. Best wishes with the five stage model. There's lots more about it if you'd like to know about it, but I hope you will be able to use it for your storyboard. Bye for now.